Hello everyone, this is Loaf speaking, Dead Sides Community Manager, and today I'd like to talk to you guys about Update 0.5.0. I have a lot of new and exciting features to talk about today, but before we get into that, I know that most of you are just dying to hear a release date in this video, and unfortunately we just don't have one for you yet. Uh, we are making good progress on this update, in fact at the time of making this video, we are preparing a closed test of the update with our private testers in the official Discord, so depending on how well these tests go, we can hopefully have a release date for you all relatively soon, and I know that's not very satisfying to hear, but it's the best I can give you at this point. With that out of the way, let's actually talk about update 0.5.0. In this video, we are only going to cover the content that we haven't talked about before, with the exception of boats and water wells. So if you aren't already familiar with update 0.5.0, I highly recommend that you read some of our older work in progress Steam posts, which cover things like the new islands in the north. So, let's talk new features! As always with every major update in Deadside, we have some improvements to older areas of the map. You will see a lot more of these destroyed buildings added into towns, mainly in the southern areas of the map. And this isn't a major change, but it does help add to the atmosphere of these old abandoned towns. There have also been some churches and graveyards added to two towns on the map. You will see these slightly outside the town themselves. These churches are pretty tall, and one of them can even be climbed all over, so these are sure to be a favorite spot of snipers. New buildings aren't the only thing that are going to be added into towns. Of course, we have the new water wells. We have already talked about these in a previous Steam post, but now you can actually see these water wells in action. These water wells can be found at random towns and allow players to get water around the map without depending on random soda spawns or a base water collector. At these water wells, you can quickly fill up a flask, pretty much like the water collectors at your base. In case you don't have a flask, we are also working on adding water bottles as well. These bottles will function similarly to the flasks that are already in game, except that they will spawn around the map in towns for players to use. Along with making water more accessible, we have also made cooking food easier as well. For a long time, the only way you could make a campfire was to find an axe somewhere around the world, that way you could chop some logs and then make a fire. This isn't great for a lot of reasons, so in update 0.5.0, you will be able to make a campfire out of sticks. All you need to get the sticks is the knife that you spawn with, and then to use the knife on a bush. From there, all you need is a lighter, of course, to light the fire, and you're good to go. You can still use campfires with logs if you'd like, that option isn't going to be going anywhere, but being able to make a fire with just sticks without using an axe should make cooking food much more accessible. And while we're talking about food and water, let's talk about the traders. In update 0.4.0, back in October, we added duck hunting and water collectors. And because of those two additions, we then removed food and water from the safe zone traders. And many people in the community were not happy with this choice, and gave us some pretty good feedback in response. So, food and water will be coming back to the safe zone traders, however, it will be much more expensive than it previously was. The idea here is to make food and water expensive enough that players will want to gather it elsewhere to save money, but not so expensive that it's totally restrictive. For example, if you're preparing to raid somebody's base and suddenly you run out of food supplies, well, in that case it makes sense to drop some cash on some quick food at the trader. And that isn't the only change coming to the safe zone traders. You can expect many things to be returning. Some weapons and attachments will be coming back, as well as some equipment that was previously there a good while ago. Roaming traders have also gotten some love as well. Now their inventory will always be the same, they will be selling both weapons and armor. Their prices have become more reasonable as well. The items that they sell are a bit cheaper, and they will purchase your items for more than they did before. We don't have a final list of the trader items or the price changes yet. We need to do more playtesting first, so we'll keep you updated on those changes in the future. Another design change that you will be seeing in update 0.5.0 is some adjustments to the weapon recoil. Now, it's no secret right now that some of the weapons like the AR-4 have much less recoil than they probably should, and as a result, the AR-4 has become the meta weapon of 0.4.0, pretty much dominating the kill feed among experienced players. At the same time, some weapons like the RPK mod and the SCAR are seriously underperforming because of the recoil changes. 
So, I've been making adjustments to the recoil again. Some weapons will be harder to control now, like the AR-4, and some weapons will become easier to control, like the RPK and the SCAR. So, I think in update 0.5.0, you will see some better weapon balance, at least when it comes to recoil. For the next section of this video, let's talk about sound design. A big improvement to the audio that you will be seeing, or hearing, in update 0.5.0 is bullet sounds. This includes everything from ricochets, impacts on different material, and even the snap of a supersonic bullet going past you. This not only makes gunfights a lot more immersive, but it should actually improve the gameplay itself. The audio cues should make it a lot easier to tell when you are being shot at and where that bullet went. And this could be valuable information when dealing with a long-range sniper, or even somebody with a suppressed weapon from far away. Lots of work has also been put into the ambient sounds as well, with different areas around the map having new and unique ambient noises to complement them. All of these changes combined have seriously improved the soundscape of Deadside, so I'll stop talking about it and I'll just let you have a listen. Finally, the biggest feature that we haven't touched on yet is the boats, and I'm sure you guys are curious what's going on with them. Well, as you could probably guess, the netcode situation with the boats is still proving to be difficult. Even still, we are making progress. Like I mentioned earlier, we are preparing a big playtest for the boats right now, but man has it been a challenge to get to that point. Originally, I was just going to give you all a very long-winded technical explanation on why exactly the netcode of the boats is so challenging, but instead I think it would be more fun just to show you all the wacky bugs that we've encountered on our journey just to get to this playtest. So, every bug that you are about to witness has already been fixed, and with that in mind, I present to you the Ballad of the Boat.
So as you can see, there have been many, many different problems that pop up when trying to design these boats. And keep in mind, those were just the funny ones. There are many more issues with slight stuttering or frame rate or server crashes and optimization. The list goes on. And I know you guys have heard it before, but it's worth mentioning again that the reasons the boat have been such a challenge basically comes down to how Unreal Engine handles physics and networking and trying to get those two things to interact correctly with the player character itself. During these past few months, the boat system has been completely remade over and over again, but it's looking like we've finally found a good solution that will actually work within the restrictions of Unreal Engine 4. It's been a very long road to get to where we are today, and I hope you can see just how hard the team has been working to actually push this update out in a good and polished state. So we're going to have to ask you to be patient for just a bit longer. In the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed having a look at these new features as well as the goofy boat physics. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I will be responding to them as long as the comments are reasonable. And as always, if you have any feedback, you can submit it to our Nolt platform. We do read through those. Thank you for watching, and I hope to talk to you all again soon.